at that. Literally went from a lesser feed with some snows, now it's a snow goose feed with some lessers. What the heck happened? Yeah! <laughs> Welcome back to another one guys and today's a special one a lot of you have been requesting me to do some scouting videos now today we're gonna start from the top and the top is starting at the roost you park at the roost so that's what I'm doing today I am parked by one of the biggest roosts and then I'll be hopping around and I'll be watching the roost water up until these birds lift and get off that's the trick of the trade guys find your roost first watch them when the birds get up, follow them and see where they go. Do that a couple times, you start to see what fields and what areas the birds are hitting during that time of the season. So early season, mid season, late season, they kind of switch up. Especially as new swaths of birds come in with the cold fronts, with new birds, new fields, they're gonna be doing some different things. So keeping up with them is important. And one way to do so is to always start at the roost and see where the new birds are going. When you get big pushes of new birds in, that's just it. You need to start back at the roost again and follow them new birds. So as you can tell, it's snowing and I got ice all over my windshield already. Yeah, it's freaking awesome. I'm so excited. Yesterday, literally, literally 24 hours, within 24 hours, we went from having nothing, just kind of some local honkers around, you know, to literally having everything. We had the biggest push, um, definitely of the season so far yesterday and today it's snowing so um, it's real looking really good I'm really excited and that's why I busted out the camera I was like man we need to do a scouting video <laughs> oh my goodness look at this how pretty is that oh man Ooh, it might be a good winter boys so this is the second snow we've had but uh on we've already had the one snow what was it probably two three weeks ago where it actually stuck a little bit we had a trace on the ground not even an inch but i can remember last season we didn't even barely have a trace i think we got two traces the entire through february pretty much you know uh it, it was it was ugh, it was a botch so there was no moisture no moisture last year at all so Seeing it this early like this, oh yeah, about to be a good one, boys. I'm at the first roost here, and I uh, crawled up the dike to go look at it, and man, there's no birds on it. And last night, I just heard birds jumping roost to roost and everything. I'm wondering if these birds just flew all night. They literally might have just pushed right on through, trying to outrun the storm. That, they do that sometimes. When there's a big storm like this, it's right on their butt pushing them. They'll push right on through an area. They will sit down, get a drink, get a bite to eat, and then fly the rest of the night. I've seen them uh, flying all night, plenty of times, uh, in front of huge, huge cold, cold fronts. So, and with it being this cold, a lot of times they hunker down on the water and they don't make a lot of noise. I'll usually just pull up next to a roost. If I can't see it, I'll roll down my window and I'll just listen. And uh, a lot of times if it's not doing this, obviously, they'll be chirping a little more. Uh, but when it gets cold, they don't make a lot of uh, a lot of noise. So I'm hoping we held some birds. I guess I'll turn the camera back on uh, if I find a pile of them. Well, like I expected with this uh, cold, cold front and all this snow and ice moving in here, I knew it was going to be a while before they would have got off the roost. And here it is, 8.30, and they're finally all piling off the roost and literally not flying at all. And I don't know if you can see them through that window over there, but let's check them out. They are wadding, just piling in. A lot more snows than I figured. Oh, boy. That's a wad. Oh, man. See all the white sprinkled in there? There's a whitey landing right there. Beautiful, beautiful. So I think that's uh, you know something to take with this, a little lesson learned here for you guys and, and something to remember for myself is on real foggy or, or extremely cloudy, cold with a front, rain, sleet, snow, anything like that, be prepared in those cold, bitter conditions like that those weather systems you get what I'm saying the birds aren't gonna get off the roost at the crack of, crack of daylight it's gonna take them a little bit it's cold they're hunkered down they got to get warmed up 
let the sun come up a little more, and then they start moving out a little later. Find your roosts first. It's very important that you find your roosts. If you find the bodies of water that hold the birds, that's important. You go to those bodies of water and you watch the birds lift off and you follow them to the field. It's very easy. A lot of you have a ton of different questions and they're all great questions concerning scouting and how to, when's the best time of day. Best time of day guys is obviously in the mornings after they're getting off of that roost from sitting on it all night long. They're going to be hungry, especially after a cold front. New birds move in, they've been flying a long time. If the cold, it's going to tell them eat, eat, eat. They're going to be hungry, they're going to be getting to the field quick. After big cold fronts is just a great time to not only hunt fresh birds, but to scout scouting fresh birds seeing what they're doing because they're going to be hungry they're going to be doing it dirty getting in the field just like this group watch look at that boom them are bigger ones there them are big old lessers i actually do have some honkers in the field too so some honkers even rolled in and uh but we have a ton of lessers and cacklers out there with a good amount of snows i'm surprised to see how many snows we actually have that's pretty neat but the sad thing about the snows real quick it was not a good hatch this year up north in the old tundra i guess uh, a couple weather systems wiped out the snow goose hatches and um, just we're not going to have a lot of juvies this year yet last year it was a great hatch and we had a ton of juvenile snow geese blues and rosses running around everybody under the sun was just whacking them and and making just piles of these juvies. This year, it's going to be different. We're going to be dealing with mostly adults this year. Adult snows, one of the hardest, hardest waterfowl species to trick. I guarantee it. Oh, well, here's another one. These are uh, all bigger birds here. You can tell not only by their size, but just how they're sitting. They're nice and spread out. Look at these honkers. These are all honkers here. I actually got more honkers in this year. This is neat. Look at these honkers, how they're sitting. These honkers, they like having some space. Give me some room. We're going to spread out. The younger birds, they like to bunch up. What I'm mentioning here is just part of the scout. Seeing what type of birds, what species, if they're uh, younger birds, if they're older birds, uh, and what they are. Their specks, Canada snows. Determining if they're younger or adult birds is key. As you can see, uh, the cacklers and lessers, uh, the last feed we found, they bunch up, ball up tight, feed real close, shoulder to shoulder, whereas the honkers, it's kind of like hunting back up in Minnesota and Canada, big widespread decoy spreads, not using as many decoys, just nice big opens, wide open spaces. That's honker hunting. Cackler and lesser hunting was the feed you've seen before this one very tight the snows they like to sit very tight the snows there's no snows over in this feed this feeds only a mile away from the last one and uh, the snows want to be with the younger birds they I seen two snows circle over this here honker feed and uh, they sat down a minute they got right back up and went back to the other feed with the uh, younger birds all the lessers and the uh, cacklers so just goes to show always 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 try to determine the age of the bird and uh, how they're sitting in that in that field you want to match the hatch always match the hatch how they're sitting try to make your spread look the same as to how the birds you're going to be hunting how they're sitting on your scalp i know that's pretty layman's you know pretty pretty obvious but it's part of the scout and that's what i what that's what i said i was going to do start from the top and uh, make an entire scouting video. I hope, I really do hope you guys are enjoying this scouting video. If you are, drop your boy a big old thumbs up. And if you have any comments, any questions that I'm not covering right now, drop them down below, ask me, and I will uh, try to get around to answering them all, or I'll just incorporate those questions in the next video. One big question is always, hey Bobby, I have school all day, or hey Bobby, I have to work all day. When is the best time to scout? due to my schedule and availability. Well, obviously mornings is the best. If you can't make it out, try to get try to get out right after work or right after school. If you if you get out of school at 3, 3.30, you have plenty of time. The birds are usually flying right now around five o'clock in the evening. So just like uh, if you have work, you get off at five, hit them dirt roads right when you get off. You, you should have enough time. Even if it's almost dark, 
uh, right now with the birds moving and uh, them wanting to be hungry. They're going to be out in them fields a little longer eating. So the evening scout should be good right now for a little while. But I think one thing that's uh, I'm finding that's very prominent to today and in scouting in general is once you get the hang of scouting, every year following, every season becomes extremely easy. A lot easier as the years and seasons go on. The birds tend to use the same fields. You'll find primary fields that the birds hit first and foremost before jumping or leaving the roost too far. So when new birds come in, they're going to be feeding close to that roost usually. Those fields that are close to the roost are going to be dominant fields year round, year after year. So you tend to learn what fields are just going to be producing fields year after year. That's one tactic I use all the time is I find a field and I just kind of keep tabs on it the following year and that season, you know. Whatever fields that they're using around a roost are usually going to be really good producing fields each year as long as the crop's off of them. So, 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 the big, big secret, find your roost. First and foremost, find the body of water that the birds are sleeping on at night. That's the biggest factor in this whole deal. A good scout, a good waterfowl hunter finds his roost. You gotta know your roost before you know anything else, really. Goodness, check this out. I, uh, I made one big round and now I'm back to the original big feed that we found. Oh my goodness, look at all these snow geese. I never would have thought we had this many snow geese in. Look at that. Literally went from a lesser feed with some snows, now it's a snow goose feed with some lessers. What the heck happened? Holy smokes. Woohoo! I like it. Oh, just crazy. So, the honker feed that we were at, now it's been about an hour since we've been there, 45 minutes. Look at it now. What the heck? Same thing with the last feed. It went from, I think what happened is a lot of these, a lot of the lessers from that other field bumped over here and, and drug, a t not a ton, but some snows with them. They're still sitting way widespread compared to that other, uh, other feed over there. Check it out. A lot more birds over here on this one now. There's just a ton more birds on this one now more white there was no white now it's a lot of lessers mixed in with the honkers crazy still still sit really wide and big though look at these big old honk daddies rolling in here oh yeah oh yeah and look at that right above them we got ducks that's what we want to see right there now, now I'm not going to have to go driving an hour, hour and a half every stinking morning to go out to western Kansas and uh, get underneath birds. Now they're finally in my lap and they're finally here at home. That's what I've been waiting on. This is exactly what I've been waiting on. I mean, last night I seen the birds rolling in. I literally jumped in the truck, probably 5.15, 5.30 found the first feed which is this one here that we're watching and literally was just yelling at him out the window you suckers I'm gonna get you yeah you know just hype I'm so hype and and I'm ready to have fun I'm ready for it not to be as much work I'm sick of driving absolutely sick of it so the birds being here absolutely gets Bobby all pumped up I mean this is this is why I started waterfowl hunting right here this area you know, all my location, my area, my hometown, and now when they show up, man, it just gets me going. It's freaking awesome. Ooh, it is cold. My goodness. Oh, that's what I like. I like walking in the door and seeing presents. Oh, well, thank you, dive bomb. Oh, what'd you say, Bob? What'd you say, Bob? Oh, okay. Look at that. Oh, I love coming home to some fresh boxes, unopened silos. Oh my goodness. That is a warm welcome home. And the bud, look at the bud. Hi, Bob. What are you doing? Are you eating breakfast burritos? Bob. Ha ha ha, you little stinker. He's crazy, man. You're crazy, man. See? You see? See the camera? Huh? Yeah, you see, Bubba? My little man. That is that is my little Bob right there. His name's Bodie. He wants see? the camera. 
He wants to hold the camera. Here you go. Hold the camera and you, you vlog with it. Ready? Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Oh, no. That's not gonna work. Uh, my little bob -aroni. and uh, I love getting to come home and spend the days with him and edit downstairs and come back up and hang out with him just randomly. It's so nice. And because of this YouTube channel, I'm able to do that. But today was just some simple scouting tips. You know, for one, find your roost. You gotta find the roost. That's your primary goal, is to find the body of water that them birds are wanting to roost on overnight. So in the mornings and in the evenings when you go out to scout, you know where to go. You know where they're gonna be getting off of and headed out to the field to eat. So you can follow them. You can if they're switching up fields, that's how you uh, follow them. That's how you follow them to the new fields, is by following them off of that roost. But I really do hope that there were some helpful tips in here for y'all. If I didn't cover something, uh, drop a comment down below and ask me. I'll try to get around to all of the uh, questions down below on this one. If you haven't subscribed, you need to do so. I really hope you guys enjoyed this little scouting video. I really hope I covered some just basic bases, you know. But again, if you guys have any ideas for videos, drop them down below. Give me a big ol' thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And y'all better be enjoying this cold weather and snow that we got because there have been birds just flying over the house non-stop. Coming in from the north non-stop. Just flew all night. I think it was 10 o'clock last night. I heard them all dive bombing in here. So, they are just stringing in here. I love it. But we will see you on the next one, guys. Happy Foul Friday. Peace.